Welcome back everybody. Now a few months ago I bought this Gen 2 Mini Mover to help move around our camp trailer, our caravan, our box trailers and I noticed there weren't too many videos around on it. So I thought I'd do a quick review to show you what it does and what it doesn't to help you out if you're after something like this because there's a really big price difference between buying an eBay special like this and a proper dedicated caravan mover and all of them have their pros and cons. This was a little bit surprising, so stay tuned as we run through what it's all about. Rightio, before we go too far, let's go through a few of the specs of what this is all about. So this is the Gen 2 Mini Mover. It's essentially the second generation eBay jockey wheel style 12 volt mover. In that it's got an electric motor that drives a wheel and it gives you some power assist to move a caravan, camper trailer, boat or box trailer around in your backyard essentially, but it does have some limitations. So if you happen to be hunting around for something like this, you want to buy the Gen 2 model. It's the 550 watt versus the 350 watt in the original version of these particular movers. These are marketed through a whole range of different brands and sold in all your normal places such as eBay, Amazon and all your online stores. But essentially they're the same thing, particularly when they say Gen 2 mini mover or 550 watt and from my understanding they all come out of the same factory. Now the maximum load they state that this will move is around about 2.7 ton or in the US spec 6,000 pounds. As far as the jockey wheel itself goes, it's got a max loading of 498 kilos which again equates to 1,000 pounds. Now that is quite a lot and I doubt that anyone using this would ever go close to that given that most things you're moving around would be sitting at around about that 200 to 250 max ball weight. And I personally believe if you go over anything around 300 kilos, you're probably going to be struggling a fair bit with this, particularly if there's any type of incline or little slopes you need to get over, which we'll run through as part of this video. It weighs just over 15 kilos, which isn't too bad really, and retails for around about $400. So it's a little bit more than your $80 jockey wheel, but it's considerably less than other powered options. To be honest, there's not much from the $400 to $1,000 mark, and most of those movers are manual with the option of inserting your drill or something like that. And then you're looking at around $1,500 for your entry level purple line caravan movers, which are fantastic. And also your powered uh, trailer valets as well. And then from this point, you're looking at around two and a half to three and a half thousand dollars for your dedicated heavy duty caravan tugs that generally have a tow ball attachment and, and go onto your hitch to move your caravan or camper trailer around. Now, for most people that's out of your budget, but if you've got a real difficult, awkward space, it might be something you look into just to keep your own sanity. But for now, we'll just focus on the cheap eBay version and we'll see what it can do and more importantly, what it can't do to help you out if you're looking to buy one of these. Now these run a gear ratio of around 494 to one. Wow. Which gives a max feed of around about six to seven liters per minute. So they're incredibly slow, but don't look at that as a negative because if you're moving stuff around, you don't want it going too fast and therefore, you know, potentially cause dramas where you're maneuvering through a tight space and you start running into things. Like I did when I was first trying to get the uh, old swan out of the shed. And it can happen so quick as you saw in that little clip there. Now, if you've got a really long driveway or you need a little bit of extra speed, these do have a freewheeling option where you just rotate this dial and it unlocks the clutch 
and you can free spool and move this around on the surface that you're working on. Which is quite handy actually, as the stick that comes off this actually makes it quite manoeuvrable and easy to move around in the freewheeling mode. Another consideration with these is that they're essentially made to work on a flat hard surface. And they do state a uh, maximum incline of around about seven degrees, which, which isn't too much. Uh, they do have a built-in brake, but again, because you're potentially moving around something quite heavy, even a camper trailer, which is between one and a half and two ton, if it's on an incline and it starts to roll away, just be a little bit cautious because you won't be able to stop that. And now I've been using this to move our box trailer in and out over the last couple of months while we've been cleaning out the shed and the carport next door. And it's got a reasonable amount of weight in it. We've got a lot of pallets, timber, bits of junk from different building projects that we need to get rid of. And to be honest, it's been really hard up until this point to pull it out of the carport so you can clean it up a little bit more, load it up, get it out of the way, mow, even mow around. So just being able to put this on without having to actually bring a vehicle out, connect it up, move it, uh, has actually been a saving grace. Another interesting little use that I hadn't really thought of when I actually bought this is that this works perfectly to actually tow your trailer, caravan or camper trailer up to the hitch point on your vehicle. So you can really easily just manoeuvre what you're towing out, up to your tow ball, drop it down and you're ready to go. But the real test is obviously the swan and the journey. Now before we get into that, let's go through what you get as part of the kit and what it's all about. So in the big box that this comes in, you get the Gen 2 Mini Mover, fully assembled with the jockey wheel and everything as the main unit. And then you get the handle with the backwards and forward toggle that actually goes into the Mini Mover itself. This comes in two pieces that you simply bolt together using the two supplied bolts and they also come with dome nuts just to keep it all nice and tidy. And also the wiring harness which is roughly around one and a half metres long and it's got the red and black input that goes into the back of the Gen 2 Mini Mover itself and has these terminals which will generally go on to a smaller AGM battery. And that is the standard setup that they send you. Now if you've got a caravan or camp trailer that has an Anderson plug on the front at the tow hitch that connects to your vehicle or some solar panels that runs directly to your battery, what I would suggest is you terminate these terminals and actually put on a Anderson connector so that you can use the battery in your camper trailer or a caravan to actually operate this and move it around. In my case, I've left these crimp terminals on because this works perfectly with a little 60 amp hour AGM battery that I've got left over from another project. This is perfect for powering the mini mover and makes it dead simple to move around and change from drawbar to drawbar. And using these terminals supplied with the wiring, I simply put them onto the battery and then it's ready to plug into the mini mover itself. For me that's the best option because I can move this unit from drawbar to drawbar and power it up and move it around without fiddling around too much. Now you also get this bolt on clamp which can go onto your drawbar using the supplied bolts which also works with this lock that has four keys and it secures the locking pin so that your mini mover can't be stolen off your caravan or camper trailer. Now, my only concern with this is you're drilling holes into the drawbar, which I'm not a huge fan of. I would be more inclined to buy a full U-clamp bracket kit if you're wanting to do a second jockey wheel attachment just to use this mini mover itself. And a good option for that is to get a dual clamp unit just like this. And I'll go through why you might want to do that when we show how this goes on to our Jacko Swan over here in the corner. Interestingly enough, my kit actually came with a spare locking pin that you use to put the handle into the mini mover. So you do get a bit of hardware, zip ties and bits and pieces as well, just to make your life a little bit easier. And now we'll start getting into a few of the bits and bobs to see if this would be suitable for your particular use or not. The wheel itself is an eight inch tall unit which is about the standard size of a jockey wheel. Uh, some caravans, particularly the off-road or outback models, if you're talking in Jayco land, uh, come with a, a larger 10 inch tall. 
but the actual width of the tyre is quite wide. So it's around about 85 mil wide and it's got this all-terrain pattern, I guess they call it, sort of like a tractor tread on it, which does actually help it move around in grass and stuff like that. I do think there is a bit of a limitation because this actually reduces the contact surface if you're trying to move something a little bit awkward such as a tandem axle trailer. On the front of the unit you have a weatherproof plug that allows the cable from your handle to plug in. And on the rear of the unit you also have another weatherproof plug that comes off to provide the point for your power cable to plug into and also has the on and off switch. Now your handle receiver is on the front of the unit and it comes with this turnbuckle that secures it into place. If you look on top, it's actually got a T-slot in it and that becomes quite invaluable because one of the restricting factors if you use your existing jockey wheel clamp that's typically welded onto your caravan, the handle coming out will obstruct on your tow hitch or the front section of your drawbar. But you can actually adjust it and manipulate it from the factory which I think is a really good thing. But we'll get into that shortly when I show you how it all bolts on and how you use the unit itself. Because I thought I'd show you this little quirk while it's up on the workbench before we go and put it onto the camp trailer itself. Now one limitation I found with these, if you're intending to use it on grass or a soft surface, even though it's got this wide tire, it could have a tendency to dig in if it breaks through that grass surface. Now where that becomes an issue is that you'll notice that the gear set here and the motor itself and also the bottom of the frame of the jockey wheel is actually quite low to the ground. So if you do actually break through the surface and this digs in and you don't stop immediately, uh, you will find that this will get stuck, buried, and you won't be able to move any further. Now it's not all bad news because you could use some ground boards such as some MDF, some plywood, or I even tried some uh, real heavy duty rubber mats that you can move around to help you move this on a soft surface. But let's go and get this installed onto the Swan and I'll show you how it all works. Firstly you want to get a jack stand and place it under the drawbar like so. Now don't lift this all the way up if your caravan or camp trailer is sitting all nice and level. What we want to do is actually lower it down a little bit so there isn't so much leverage on the caravan mover itself. So we'll put that on now and I'll run you through the process of connecting it all up. Now one thing you could do before we get into the jockey wheel itself is to get a dual clamp holder that actually bolts onto the A-frame. The advantage of that is that provides two leverage points rather than the single point you have if you're using your existing jockey wheel holder like this. Now I mention that because there have been some comments floating around that with the jockey wheel style movers is that they can place some stress and fatigue on the actual welded joint onto the A-frame. Now I think where that comes in is that people are moving them with this distance quite high between the A-frame and the actual mover wheel itself. And that in itself is creating a lot of force and leverage on this mounting point when you're trying to move your caravan or camper trailer around. And that's exactly why I said to leave that jack stand down a little bit. Because what we want to do is to actually drop this A-frame down so that the distance between the bottom of the A-frame and in particular this clamp and the actual mover itself is as small as it can possibly be. Now also note that to an extent, dropping it down so that there's a bit more of a downward rake is potentially transferring a little bit more weight onto the jockey wheel itself. However, I don't think you'll notice too much of a difference. And to be honest, it just makes that whole setup a little bit more secure while you're trying to maneuver around, particularly if you need to go through some grass or softer material like we're about to do right now. So we'll drop this down and we've now got all the weight sitting on the jack stand on the other side. So now we can actually remove this jockey wheel and put it off to the side. Now it's just a case of manoeuvring in the Gen 2 Mini Mover and clamping it back into place. And now you'll notice what I was talking about regarding the height between the bottom of the clamp and the Mini Mover itself. You now don't have too much leverage at all while you move your camper trailer or caravan around so that it's not putting too much stress on these particular mounts themselves. So just using the stock kit and this external battery that I've got mounted onto our bike rack here, it's a simple case of just plugging this plug into the back of the mini mover. Switch it on and we're ready to roll. 
and you'll notice I've run the cable down behind the back of the bike rack so that it's got a little bit of slack but not too much that it might drag or get caught up on things while we're moving this around. And while we're down here, I'll note one little thing that I think most people are going to come across. Unless you put a specific mount in that's located further towards the front of the drawbar. And that is that this bar that you use to steer the wheel, if you're doing a real tight turn towards the drawbar, it will actually foul on it. Now, they do actually make this a little bit better in that you can slot it to the side and then twist it underneath. However, in our instance, we do still hit the chain where it's welded onto the drawbar. The way around that is obviously you lift it up a little bit higher. So it just comes down to a little bit of a compromise depending on where and how you need to maneuver the van or camper trailer around itself. But it does work pretty well, which I'll show you right now. And the first test is a really simple one, and that is maneuvering it around inside the shed here, which is probably its primary task. And that, it did incredibly well. It's a cheap, affordable way of being able to shuffle your caravan or camper trailer from side to side, move it backwards and forwards, and generally get it into place without struggling too much and even raising a sweat. And now on to the real test, because I wanted to see if I could use this mini mover out on the grass so that I could get the swan out or the journey if it was in here. It's a bit of a hassle bringing the car in and pulling it out, maneuvering it around, because as you'll notice in the next clip, it's really tight getting it in and out through the doorways here. And I thought this would be a really good solution for that. Now behind me is the shed where we do most of our videos in and where the swan is kept. Down over here is our backyard where it's, you know, nice and lovely. And the grass over here isn't too bad. However, on this side, it's very, very patchy and it's extremely sandy and soft. So I think it will be a real test for moving something like that with a little bit of weight. And so I quickly encountered my first challenge where this wheel dug into the sand, where we didn't really have a lot of grass right in front of the shed. And I bought these one by one meter rubber mats with this little checker plate finish on it, just to see how it would work in that particular instance. And thankfully it worked quite well. The theory with this is that they're soft, they've got a little bit more grip than say some MDF or plywood that the wheel would bite into. I suppose the issue with it is that it's flexible and does actually sort of twist and conform under the weight of the wheel. Okay, now you can see we're off the rubber mat and back onto the grass. I really want to give this a go because I think if you have to keep putting mats or some other board or something down, it makes it extremely difficult, even though you're moving at a slow pace. It just, it's another thing to do. Uh, you'll also see I'm pretty close to the edge of the shed there. And that's another thing. You're not focusing so much on what the van's doing, but trying to watch where the wheels are going. Now for this next section, I forgot to turn the main cameras on. So we'll just persevere with a quick time lapse, which gets us to the next challenge. And it's very similar to what I encountered when I first hit the sand going off the slab of the shed. Oh, bogged, eh? Nah, mate, just, uh, just parked. So you can see where it tracked through, and it was doing really well until we hit this. And then I was trying to turn it because I'm trying to go back towards the carport and it dug right in. It's just a case of putting the mat back underneath. We'll roll back onto it and start maneuvering it back towards where we want to go. The issue is where we've got nothing and it is sand. It's like driving on a beach, honestly. Uh, it's dug right in. So I will need to use the mats just to get it back up and back onto some decent sort of grass like over here. And it's real soft ground that I am asking a lot of this, but I thought that was probably what would make a fairly interesting video at the same time. So I do think if you've got some really nice thick grass, this will work quite well. But if it's really thin and patchy like ours with a terrible underlay of sand, uh, this really isn't suitable. So anyway, that was a bit of a fail. So now the challenge was to get it back into the shed. And that's where I encountered the next problem. Okay, we're about to hit the concrete ledge. And it's not going to work. There's actually a slight downward slope to the lip that goes up onto the concrete slab itself. And try as we may, packing things out, putting things under, 
We just simply could not get it back in. So we had to revert to the good old Pajero. So after all of that we go back to the original purpose of these easy movers and that is to put them on when you're detaching from your vehicle so you can manoeuvre them around inside your garage, shed, on your driveway or some other surface that is suited to these particular movers. So we'll get this back off now and we'll move over to the journey because I want to see how this will work with a tandem axle caravan. Okay now our journey is parked on the side of the house at the moment but we do have this sort of concrete area here that I'm going to try to manoeuvre it around onto. And the reason for doing that is that we have leaves blowing in everywhere and they all collect in this little area down the side of the house. So I want to be able to move this journey for now around a little bit. The original plan was to take it off into the grass, but after today's little scenario, uh, I don't think that's going to happen. But at least let me move it around so that I don't have to put it onto the vehicle, tow it out the front and put it all back because we haven't finished out there and it's a bit of a rigmarole. But if we can just manoeuvre this around so that we can clean underneath it and then put it back into position for now, I'll be a happy man. I've just dropped it down a little bit so it's biased on the front axle to get a bit of a load off the rear axle to hopefully make it easier to do the turn. And it does work to a point, however watch that jockey wheel. Now I don't know if you can see down here, but uh, because of the resistance of those wheels, it's basically fighting this jockey wheel and it's, it's literally skipping and sliding its way around the corner. So I hung my head in shame and manoeuvred it back into place. And having moved it back, I think it's actually probably not too bad just for those little maneuvers where you need to adjust things or shift things from side to side. Uh, it actually does a fairly good job at that even with this big van. It's obviously if you're trying to do big turns it doesn't really perform too well. So anyway uh, let's go back into the shed and wrap this thing up. And now this is actually a real interesting lesson in physics because while I actually dropped the A-frame down to take a bit of a load off the back set of axles so that it was sort of working as a one and a half axle caravan it is actually amazing at the force and friction applied by those four wheels when you're trying to physically turn or maneuver it around. I don't have any issues with trying to use this. It would be if you're trying to do a 90 degree turn or a sharp turn into a carport or something like that where you're storing it that this probably won't really work and you probably have to look at a more expensive option. And they are the results of me trying to use the Gen 2 Mini Mover. To be honest, I'm not really surprised at all. I was pushing it beyond its limits and to be honest for its primary task of just being able to move a single axle trailer, caravan or camp trailer around, it does perfectly fine. We've just got some instances here where it just struggled a little bit and couldn't do exactly what I wanted it to do. And I'm not going to go out and buy a $2,500 caravan tug because that's what I really need to use here. I'd actually like to try to build something that actually works on the principle of this, but improves a few features. It might add in dual wheels. Uh, for example, from Alibaba, you can actually buy full electric 12 volt axle kits that go onto the back of a buggy or something like that. I'm sure you could adapt that onto say a moving dolly so that you've got a frame with a ball that actually goes into your tow hitch and you can easily move it around. So I think there's a few options and there's potential for a little project down the track if I find some time to actually cobble something together. But I've got to get going to go and pick Sam up now. So thanks for watching and as I always say, get out there, stay safe and have fun. We'll catch you next time.